Hey guys, it's Danny. You'll never guess, but today we're testing out yet another product. However, this was not scheduled as it is, as, as what I'm gonna show you today. This was something else. So surprise, surprise, for those of you who are old school on my channel, we are playing with Orchid Focus. Now, this brand was not really a friend of mine along these years. And when I say friend, I don't mean collaborating or anything. I just didn't use it much because I had a bad experience with their potting medium. Always stayed away from that potting medium. When it comes to fertilizer though, I used it quite a bit. Uh, I don't think it's a bad fertilizer. I think it's just a weak fertilizer and I did experience what I believe were some deficiencies over the period of one summer when my orchids obviously grow faster and they need more nutrients. It would appear the Orchid Focus Fertilizer, which I actually used for a year and a half or something like that, that's where it failed. Other than that, it didn't really fail and there was always something that I appreciated in the Orchid Focus Fertilizer and this is the addition of humic acid and fulvic acid, the brownie stuff that you see. Those things are actually really beneficial for plants. They're also, as the name suggests, acidic, so they do tend to reduce the pH. If you have a water with a pretty high pH, this will help, obviously. My main problem with this fertilizer was the concentration, the concentration of macros, uh, specifically. So let's take a look. We can see here that the concentration of NPK is 1.6, 2.4, 2 2.6. This is the Bloom Booster. So if we think about a fertilizer such as the MSU, which has uh, if I remember correctly, 13 nitrogen and obviously much larger numbers than these, then it's pretty easy to see this is a weak fertilizer. However, the quantity of the micronutrients was always okay. So the use of this fertilizer at a bigger concentration than what the label recommends is not a good idea. Yes, you will increase the quantities of the macros, but at the same time, the micros as well, and also the fulvic acid and the humic acid, which can lead to a serious drop in pH. So, the use of this product, more than the label recommends, is not ideal. I never did it and I don't think I ever recommended it. However, you will find on the internet forum posts or people suggesting that you do use more simply because it has this lower number of macronutrients. So I purchased these fertilizers with all of this in mind, knowing or expecting them to be quite weak and actually counting on them to be weak. I wanted to benefit from the fulvic and humic acid, although I could have purchased them separately. I just didn't wanna. For the purpose that I purchased them from, it made sense. However, I'm doing some tests and what I find right now is a little bit weird to say the least. So I was preparing the water for my Vandas, right? And I did follow the directions on the label. And on the label here it says, oh, look at this. This was not here when I was using this product. Let's see. All right, it says here to mix five milliliters of fertilizers per two liters of tepid water, ideally soft water and rainwater, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this sounds legit. It doesn't sound weird at this point. However, it continues on by saying cymbidiums should be fed with 20 milliliters of fertilizer per two liters of water. So quite the big amount, right? This, I remember, it was not here. So I used here the first one, the first ratio, five milliliters per two liters, and I prepared my little buckets and decided, hey, I'm gonna take some measurements. Mind you, I'm using osmosis water, which I will measure as it is as well without fertilizer, but mind you, it needs to be replaced. The filters finally need to be replaced. The quantity of salt is not big in my water, but what is big is the quantity of bacteria. It makes a biofilm meaning it seriously needs filter changing and that's what I'm gonna do this month. But anyway, let's go back. So I already have prepared solution and let's just take a measure. Let's see what it says. Oh my, oh my, what is this? 228 in no universe is this a weak fertilizer. Furthermore, I took a pH test. And since the pH meter needs a bit of time to adjust, a few minutes, I just let it be here. This is fertilized water. Look at this, 5.4, 5.5 pH. This is a drop from around seven. Now let me give you the measurements of my pure osmosis water. Alrighty, so here we have a bit of my osmosis water directly from my tank. Let's take some measurements, come on. 
there we go, 26 parts per million. So the vast majority of the TDS measured in the bucket came from the fertilizer, not my osmosis water. At the same time, let's test the pH of my osmosis water. Alrighty, I'm not gonna sit around and wait, it variates. It was 6.8, usually it shows me 6.9, sometimes it's around 7 or slightly below 7 my osmosis water. So you can see quite the dramatic drop and I think that has to do with the fulvic and humic acid, which I'm kind of counting on. I mean, 5.5 pH is not all that bad for orchids, particularly for some of them, which just so happens I kind of purchased. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll see. I, I got some papillopetalums because anyway. So you can see stuff kind of made sense. That's why I kind of wanted some fertilizers and so on. But now that I actually measured how strong these fertilizers are, oh my, I am impressed. Um, well, either there's something fishy going on because if you add it up, I'm not sure if these numbers will give me this result. I don't know. For those of you who are chemists or mathematicians, do the math. I feel like something doesn't add up simply by comparison to other fertilizers and their ratios. Oops, but maybe I'm missing something. If you can figure out what, do let me know down below. But the overall result of this fertilizer is around 250 parts per million, which I'm okay with. This is what I usually fertilize my orchids with. The, let's say, average feeders, at least. The heavy feeders, yeah, I add a little bit more. The weaker feeders, of course, I added the fertilizer there as well. But as a general guideline, this is what I'm using, actually. And bonus, this has some fulvic and humic acid, which are not bad from two points of view. They are stimulants for plants. That's one thing. Second thing, they do drop the pH, making other nutrients more available for pickup. Not all nutrients though, therefore I will not use it all the time. But a second very important thing is salt deposit. The more acidic the solution is, the more it is prone to dissolve deposits, whether they're on the roots or on the actual medium. So right now at this moment, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this fertilizer. On paper, it looks good, given weird and suspicious in my mind, I, I might be totally off, but it looks good and I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna test it out. Not because I ran out of MSU, because I ran out of one uh, jar of MSU. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. One year of use, I almost finished it and it already attracted a lot of water. I do have another jar, which is completely fine, it was sealed and I'm gonna add some silica gel, you know, those beads to retain humidity so I don't end up like this. I had a lot of use out of this, but as you can see, I'm losing a bit and I think I discovered it's not quite okay on, on roots. I think the final result from this is not what it should be, I have a suspicion. So it's not that I'm not okay with the MSO or that I um, finished the MSU. I do still have one jar that I intend to use at the same time with this one. I told you already what attracted me to this one. I already have some plants coming in that would prefer stuff a lot more acidic, would prefer humic acid and fulvic acid. I do have seedlings and actually my initial plan was to fertilize seedlings and mastvalias and uh, miltoniopsis, things that are really sensitive to salts with this. But now I'm not entirely sure what to do because this is not a weak fertilizer like we all believed, or at least I believed and another few people on the internet on a forum believed. So alrighty guys, this is what I wanted to tell you. I will start to use this. Now I just need to change the water in the vandal buckets. I already know the fertilizer is okay and it doesn't really burn roots. Actually, it didn't have issues with burning anything. My only problem with this guy was that it was very weak don't remember if I ever tested it. I don't know if I had a TDS meter. Well, now I have. Maybe it was like this all along, maybe it changed in the meantime. I don't know. Did you guys ever test it, this particular fertilizer? Let me know down below in the comment section because I'm really, really curious. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and of course I'll keep you up to date. I am in a testing out stuff mood lately. So you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to stay up to date and see more orchid videos from me simply subscribe to my channel, I post on a regular basis and also don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll never miss a video. And with that said I'll see you all next time, bye! On a bottle of fertilizer, you can see these elements expressed by the letters N, P, and K in some cases and their respective numbers, which will depend on the fertilizer. They represent the quantity of these elements contained in the bottle of fertilizer. All orchid fertilizers contain these substances that form the main course for our pretty orchids. 
In general, fertilizers divide in two categories. Those that have higher nitrogen content and those that have a lower nitrogen content compared to the other elements, as you can see here. High nitrogen fertilizers improve roots and foliage production.